Well, good afternoon. Um, I'm Kevin Cabral. I'm the president and CEO of the Concord Chamber of Commerce. So thank you all for attending this event today. Um, it's a pleasure for us at the chamber to work closely with the city to have this event every year. So, so first off, I just want to recognize um, our sponsors, Contra Costa Workforce Development Board, the Center for Elders Independence, the Concord Hilton, and Full Service Events. Um, our associate sponsors are the Teamsters Local 315, um, the Community Bank of the Bay, and then our executive sponsors are CMEX and Travis Credit Union. Our corporate sponsors, John Muir Health and Marathon Petroleum. We really appreciate the sponsorships. It's the only way that we can pull these things off. So along with your tickets and our sponsorships, that really helps us have these types of events. We're gonna continue with the program featuring City of Concord Mayor Eddie Bersan. My name is Jennifer Jimenez. I'm owner, operator of La Fritanguera. We're a Nicaragüense restaurant located in downtown Concord. I'm also the 2023 and 2024 chair of board of, for the Concord Chamber of Commerce. Uh, the Concord Chamber of Commerce was established 86 years ago. And the goal to provide a platform for members to grow their business. The program we host throughout the year provide opportunities for businesses to grow and thrive in our community. Some of these programs include monthly networking events, advocating for businesses, and providing educational opportunities for our members. The Concord Chamber is proud of our long-standing partnership with the City of Concord. We enjoy working alongside the city to provide resources, enabling us to better serve our members and the business community. At this time, I would like to formally introduce Mayor Eddie Barsan. Eddie Barsan was elected to the City Council in November of 2012 and re-elected in 2016 and in 2020. He serves as a vice mayor in 2017 and 2023 and as mayor in 2018 and 2024. He is an active community leader and has served in many positions, from the director of community service for the city of Diablo Rotary to the president of the Friends of, Library, of the Library, to volunteering from numerous nonprofit organizations. Uh, Barson came to Concord in 1983, working for a global, Intermittal Container Leasing Company. He started his own company in 1986, which recently focused on certification inspections and service in the intermodal equipment field. He brings a history of running a small business as well as world-class experience in pioneering efforts at, of global trade. Barson was born and raised in New York City where he earned his Bachelor Arts degree in dual major of History and Political Science from City University. And his wife, they were high school sweethearts, have raised two generations in Concord and lived in the same house since 1983 in the area of Monument. And they recently celebrated their 50 year anniversary. Please welcome Eddie Barson to the stage. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. And I'm very pleased to be here. And I love the fact that it's a sellout crowd and that we're in the city of Concord. So thank you very much for your contributions to our finances. And I will get straight to this because I think the only ones who are getting paid by the hour are our lawyers. So with that, I would like to start with a simple recognition of my city council. Uh, we have, uh, and please stand up. 
And please hold your applause till afterwards. Uh, we have Vice Mayor Carlin Obringer. We have uh, our treasurer, Patty Barsati, who is a little bit under the weather. We have Councilmember Dominic Aliano. Dominic, come out, come out wherever you are. And Councilmember Laura Hoffmeister. I should point out that both Carlin and Dominic and Laura have been past mayors. Uh, and in fact, Laura, I think, holds the records for being here six times. Uh, and we have Laura Nakamura, who will probably be our future mayor. So with that, I want to thank you all. We also have an extensive city staff. Uh, not as extensive as we had uh, 10 years ago, we're act actually about 20% less. But nevertheless, we have our city manager uh, and our city attorney uh, who are here, plus a whole other group which I cannot get into, only because I want to get this thing going. All right, next we have the interesting finances. The most important part of this operation here and in the display, I want you to take particular attention to the sales tax number and the Measure V. Most of you in this room are the ones I'm very grateful for generating those. This is really the majority money that comes from your work and your efforts and in your dealing with our fellow Concordians and our tourists who come in to spend money and please pay special attention to any of those. We want them coming back. Now, I would also point out that you'll see that we have 13% uh, from Measure V. This is only half of the actual money of the extra sales tax that we put on a couple of years ago. We're actually raising uh, close to $26 million, half of which, though, goes into our capital uh, improvements. These are things which you will see where we have fixed up roads and other things. We have only shown the portion that goes to the general fund, which is about half of it. Uh, I would also remind you that this only passed by a 500 votes at a 54,000 cast. So it was a contentious measure, but it has made a world of difference to all of us. And as you drive around, you'll see the effect. Uh, I would also like to point out that's not on this sh show is $800,000 that so far we've brought into the fund from the cannabis industry where we have led the local area, especially the central Contra Costa, and bringing it to the city. And it has also contributed an additional $300,000 to the community benefit fund that is set up as part of the requirement for uh, the cannabis people. In fact, in the next couple of months, we will be having our Community Service Commission make the first swing at allocating that money uh, to the community, nonprofits, and other sources uh, to work. And we have a few of the commish uh, here at the moment. Uh, in the past, we recently went through the uh, ARPA funds uh, and the, these are funds, we got $27 million from the grace of Washington, D.C., uh, and we were able to allocate them to the community. We not only did we take care of our own funding that we had to get through from uh, our damages that we sustained as an organization uh, from COVID, but we're also able to put over $2 million to directly to small businesses. And we created $7 million, which we got to the uh, nonprofits. And we put $3 million aside for unhoused. And we'll get more onto that now. The, one of the key plans that is most interesting amongst the ARPA money is over a million dollars that went to the Project Elevate. This is a concept where we are taking families, single families, and we are giving them $2,500 initially, and then we are providing them with an amount every month. 
for them to sustain themselves. So obviously, it's taken, the target is single families, low income, or ext actually extremely low income. Uh, and we are monitoring this to see how this works. Several hundred cities across the country are experimenting with this concept uh, and to see what can be done to elevate, which is the name, the individuals in this class without getting government overly involved in what they do. And so far, uh, there's been positive results, and we're going to see if we can get positive results here. I know that at least one of the families who I've talked to, uh, it's made a major difference. With this, uh, I would like to go into our capital improvement projects. How many of you have driven on Willow Pass Road recently? All right. Will you please slow down now that we fixed the road? <laughs> I swear, I'm going to put a speed bump on top of that bridge, and I'm going to put a YouTube uh, camera there, and we can make a fortune watching you guys hit some air. All right. The yellow cones on the bridge are not there as bowling tokens. I swear to God, someone's coming up, and, and it's like the car is making graffiti uh, as they go. I got a lot of better things for my police to do than go out and give speeding tickets. Although, quite frankly, considering what else is going on in Treat Boulevard and parts of Clayton Road, we could make a major dent in the, uh, uh, our national debt if we put out more and more speeding tickets. Unfortunately, the city gets very little money from the speeding tickets. Uh, most of it, it goes to the state and uh, it's numerous pockets of black hole where money goes. Now, uh, our capital improvement projects, we also have construction projects that are financed by a Measure V. I would like to give a, a very big shout out to our city manager who came up with the, uh, and implemented the idea of taking the Measure V money and going and getting $120 million at less than 3% uh, to be paid back so that we can escalate and move forward our projects on Measure V. Uh, we have already done quite a bit of road maintenance. And in fact, it has so inspired our group that they've actually made a little video about it. And here we go. The engineering services are our key thing. I would like to point out that the origin of our capital uh, improvements does not come from the capital. No, we do it. In fact, of those items that you saw, the 
Lights at the golf course originated by a nine-year-old kid who works at, or who goes to first tee at the golf course, who came to me and said, why don't we put solar panels uh, on the putting green? It took us a few years to do it. I was mayor then, I'm mayor now, and we finally got it done. But nevertheless, the whole idea is we list, try to listen and do what you can. Uh, and if you have ideas for capital improvements, we all have heard to fix your particular street. We've heard that. But it's nice if you say, gee, my sister lives on this street, and she really needs something because my great-grandmother, who's visiting her on a wheelchair, can't get up the street. We listen. We try. We can't do everything for everyone, but we try. OK, future projects. What's next? Uh, we will be fixing the rest of Treat, uh, going all the way to Clayton Road, which now means that you will have the equivalent of a ski jump coming down from Clayton Road before you hit Oak Grove. Again, kindly remember, brakes are existing. Uh, you can't rely on the pothole to stop you now. All right. The other thing is, which isn't listed over here, uh, the white picket fence downtown, we will actually be working on that street also. Um, the white picket fence is where the uh, Masonic Temple was. Uh, in the last, since we put that fence there, the current record is fence 37, cars zero. When you make the turn uh, from Clayton uh, Road onto uh, Monument or Glendo, slow down and be careful the white picket fence. It is very vicious. Now, uh, we have cyber construction going on, uh, actually a fiber cyber construction. And you'll see that on a whole bunch of streets. We're trying to improve our technological access for all of our community and your businesses. And if you're really interested in what's next, and I apologize for those who are red, green, colorblind. I go nuts every time I see this picture. Uh, but it's there to describe what you have in the future, and you could always go there, and uh, it will be, you're able to click on it and find out what they really think they're doing. And you have little pictures to the left. Uh, in the old days, there would be eight and a half by 11 photos with a little writing on the back. Homeless, one of our top issues in this city. We drafted a strategic plan uh, recently and we also uh, give thanks to the people that are on it. We focused on two strategies, one being having a mobile resource center, that is a bunch of trucks and vehicles and vans that will go to various locations and bring the resources to the homeless at their locations or at parks or at other places uh, temporarily. And we have found that in our research nationally, this has been a far more successful outreach technique than having a brick and mortar location anywhere in the city. Uh, it allows especially an increase for veterans that are homeless. I don't know why, but it's definitely shown at other sites that there's a massive impact increase for ho uh, homeless veterans to make use of this and as a successful beginning pathway out. The other thing we're doing is we're looking at uh, interim mobile uh, uh, motel home uh, housing. And this, again, the being conquered, we will be focusing, I hope, to continue uh, what was stated, that we will be using families first. Uh, to get the families first out of the street and out of their cars and into housing temporarily through this motel hotel and then into uh, more permanent housing. Uh, we are currently seeking, we have $5.2 million, part of which was the uh, money from ARPA. The other, the city council over the last couple of years have purposely put money aside from our general fund into this reserve for this homeless project. We have applied to get 4.7 more million dollars uh, so that we can make this motel hotel transition uh, live. 
We regularly put in yearly $1.2 million uh, to help fund nine organizations. And that includes uh, Hope Solutions and, uh, and our core and other organizations which have been able to get people off the street and into sustainable, secure, permanent housing. Our homeless response, this is our uh, film of the, the working group. And you will notice that I'm not nine feet tall there, it's just that I'm standing closer to the camera. Uh, and you'll see somewhere over there, uh, one of the, the, the little kid is actually a child of one of our lived experience uh, people who was on the panel. Uh, and that kid is here because of a success of someone reaching out uh, to a homeless person. And you'll also see uh, right behind uh, Laura Nakamura, our, who was the chair of the homeless uh, committee, who for the last year has uh, gathered the, the uh, roaming cats of the committee, uh, which included me, by the way, uh, and we were able to get things uh, moving. I would like to point out right now uh, our core group, which is coordinated outreach, response, and referral. I always get their name wrong, uh, but it's core. We, as a city, spend m our money to finance them for 20, uh, initially 20 hours a week, and now full-time, and fairly soon we will go into two full-time shifts. They were responsible for getting 143 people in the last six months off the street. They also are the ones who are uh, the first front line contacts with a lot of our homeless. And I should point out that when you see them out there and you see them giving food or giving clothing, it's not that they are enabling the homeless. They are our neighbors. We're trying to keep them alive till we get to the point where they can cooperate in their own recovery. This is an important concept. When we look at the homeless, they are us. The overwhelming number of the homeless in the city of Concord graduated from city of Concord schools. They are our neighbors. This is why when you look at them, you're looking at the graduation class of 1992. They are us. Maybe 20 to 30 percent are outside. With that, stable exits are important, and I look forward to creating a situation where when we deal with housing, uh, it's not a major driver of homelessness. Uh, sometimes it is, and it becomes the trigger to addiction, alcoholism, and others, and losing your housing stums the start. We have a serious problem with a lack of affordable housing. I'm glad to say that we have quite a few projects going on uh, and almost 300 units right now getting ready to be built. One of the ones that you will see on this uh, photo is from Galindo Monument area. And right next door to it is another one that is being done with modular construction, which is a unique concept that is being tried out with union labor and I look forward to seeing how that works. Having been in the, having been in the container business, I have turned containers into offices, containers into homes, into hospitals even. I did a project for the US Navy where we took 2,000 containers and we made the equivalent of a bunch of MASH units to go overseas so the containers then become mobile, a mobile hospital or hospitals. I look forward to seeing how this modular concept ties in with affordable housing to reduce the cost to create them. We have going on, we have the Naval Weapons Station, sometimes just called the base, also called other things, but I won't get there. We have with us uh, Brookfield, uh, who are our designated developer, and we are working right now uh, to get a 
the second version of their term sheet, the second part, I should say, and that will be at the council next week. Uh, please, you know, be free to come there. Brookfield does some of the best uh, video displays uh, and presentations uh, to, to the city. I can't tell you how anxious most of us are uh, to see this thing move. And I do have sympathy for those who wish that it doesn't move quickly. But that's not an option, folks. Uh, we need to type faster, dig faster, and move faster. Public safety, one of my uh, favorite topics, and we have various police in both uniform and I suspect elsewhere, uh, all over the room. And it's a great thank you, thank you to all of them. These are people who are out there who literally will take a bullet for you. I don't know if I could take a bullet for them. Maybe a, a small bullet, all right? But they have been under a lot of pressure nationally. Uh, people have been unfairly critical of the police. And uh, I would like to apologize to our police on behalf of those who have lost their minds and have not been able to take a look at what our cops are doing and what our cops have done for us. I would also like to point out that as part of our uh, police involvement with the community, we again have taken technology to try to make things easier for them, more efficient for them, and better for all of us. Two of the more recent categories has been drones, uh, which I should point out, one of the earliest uses of drones was to find an autistic kid that got separated from its mother. And it was because of a drone and an officer who was trained looking at the drone footage and say, hey, that kid over there, this kid looks like this, this is the one, this is the problem. And they got the kid home. In fact, this, the drones have been able to locate people, provide information so that we can avoid escalation and so that we can be efficient in terms of our time. The other aspect of uh, what we've been doing has been our license plate readers, also known as ALPR. Why we have to always have abbreviations in, in government, I have no idea. I guess it was the word government is too hard to spell most places. Anyway, our license plate readers, as of yesterday, yesterday, there was an incident where the license plate readers helped secure and lead to the detaining or arrest of an individual involved in a violent crime. That was just yesterday, all right? We have had over 170 cases where the license plate readers have been instrumental in recovering stolen cars. And, in re and securing and arresting the bad guys, or I should say these days, the bad folks. All right. We've had plenty of examples of that. And by the way, you see that picture up there? Well, go back. See that picture? That's what they are. Our recent business openings, we've had all sorts. One of the things I particularly like is the Hampton Inn, uh, which is located right off 24. We also have a very interesting uh, operation, a manufacturing project in Concord called Roof and Realm, and you can see one of their products. It's fully mobile ADUs. And these are, I believe, strongly in ADUs. And these people who are using our employees in Concord to make them and manufacturing. People say, we don't manufacture anything in America. Hey, we do in Concord, and I still think we're still part of America. Uh, we also have this uh, interesting name of a, uh, of a service called Angry Chicks. Apparently, it turns out that they, they take chicken, and they do all sorts of strange things when they cook it. And 
that when, on opening day when I was there, it was wrapped around the block. I said, okay, uh, did the chickens know? Well, that's why they're angry. So uh, the other thing we have on new businesses uh, is I'd like to point out that White Pony Express right, is, while not a per se business, it's a nonprofit business that ties in to taking food and getting it to the food pantries, the food bank, and elsewhere. I met with them this morning going over their new facility uh, being built on Bates Road, and I want to mention that they are looking for volunteers from the city of Concord because they have uh, a very significant impact on the nonprofits in Concord. We also have uh, Humphreys Slocum in the veranda. I find it a very interesting name. Uh, J. Crew Outlook, and I love the idea of a Bay Area Development Company. It's no, no competition for Brookfield, but nevertheless, we want to see development in Concord. Uh, both the Monument Boulevard, North Concord, and the uh, Diamond Boulevard are hot spots of entrepreneurial spirit and entrepreneurial efforts. We have about 9,000 small business, uh, business, uh, business licenses in the city of uh, Concord, one of the largest in, the, in our Contra Costa. And again, this chamber is one of the ones that supports uh, our opportunities and protects the opportunities for people to come and create their business here. Yet, not everything is business. We have recreation, and one of the most important new events is our uh, youth scholarship program, which focuses on low-income uh, individual kids uh, to get them involved. Uh, you saw earlier that we have Camp Concord, which is located in Tahoe, uh, and th we will be doing scholarships not only for there, but for a whole series of programs here in the city of Concord. I look forward to the time when we, we, we create a camp here, and we could call it Camp Tahoe, and we could bring the kids over here. With that, we have a sister city opportunity, a 50th year anniversary. Actually, I got married first. But nevertheless, 50 years, uh, we will have a celebration in October. We will be getting a large delegation from Kitikama, uh, our sister city in Japan. Um, not, not to be confused with Hello Kitty. Uh, and uh, we will have all sorts of events in the first week of October in which we're trying to uh, cement further for the next 50 years our relationship with them. We send our people over there and they come over here. In fact, we've had several of our uh, city council members whose children have actually been employed at Kitty Kama uh, as English teachers. So with that, uh, we have coming up an election year. As if nobody knew, it's not a secret. Further, we have no lawsuits in the city of Concord about elections. Go guys. <laughs> there will be, t aside from our City Clerk, Joel Faulkner, will be the one who's the point person on the elections. In the council itself, both Colin Obringer and myself will be standing for uh, re-election, and unless a muni bus gets us between now and then. With that, I, uh, we have a voting ballot box outside of the city hall, which you can see a picture here, all right? Please remember, it is not a method to stop a speeding car, uh, but you can drive up to it and deposit your ballot. In fact, yesterday, there was a, a couple that were at there, and the husband was photoing on video of uh, the wife voting. I know it's simple, and I know we want to make it convenient, we generally have somewhere between a 70 and 80 percent uh, voting turnout in this city. And I look forward it, 
to it being continued. I believe it was in 2000 that we hit something like 84%. And all of you can get the word out to everyone. You should all have gotten your ballots for the March uh, primary. Uh, we can, it's the first time in, we're gonna have this kind of primary vote. And I'm very curious to see what both the turnout will be as well as what the results will be. With that, I want to invite all of you again to get involved with the city. Uh, we have an academy. It used to be called the Concord Leadership Academy. Now it's just called our Concord Community Academy. And you can apply now for our classes, April 13th to May 11th. And I don't know how many people, has anyone here been to it? All right. Go see those people and they'll tell you what they learned. And if they don't tell you what they learned, tell me and I'll, I'll remind them gently in a Brooklyn style. <laughs> With that, uh, we have classes and please register before March 8th. Getting in touch with the city has never been that difficult and now it's even become easier. We have our e-newsletter. We have our app, Concord Connect, which I'm very proud to have initiated. And that allows you to make a note about something that's going on in the city, whether it be a graffiti, uh, a down tree, or a particular pothole that has your name on it. And we can, you will then get an immediate response from the computer saying, yes, you are not a uh, hacker from overseas. Send a member of the staff within one to two days uh, will come, working days, will come and tell you, yes, we're going to do it, or no, we're not. 95% of the time, yes, we're going to do it. When it goes on a work order for the week, you get a third notice saying it's in progress. And when it's done, they'll say, hooray for us, we did it. And you can say, oh, that was great. Or uh, what about the pothole on the other side of the street? But either way, it puts you in your government. Use it. Because if you call us on the council, we're just going to call them, all right? And we got other things to talk to you about than that. And it's so important in our society to see the people and government working together directly without having to go through any other means, whether it be political contacts or, you know, I know someone who knows someone, I can get this done. No, the Concord Connect is there directly for you to take the control. We are civil servants, you are the civil masters, but you gotta tell us, you know? It's not a secret what government does. We'd love to tell you everything that you want to hear. We also have this new device called Flash Vote. Flash Vote is a ongoing poll or survey that you can sign up to be a member of and when the city staff uh, puts out various questions about you know what about what's your priority should we do this to do that uh, or is this really an issue uh, these these are the first responses we get to collect some some data don't be afraid to uh, sign up and make your ideas heard um, I did this for 12 years independently with the Pulse of Concord. I'm very glad that the city has now taken this step as an official means uh, to get the pulse of what you guys are thinking. Uh, you also can visit me on uh, my office hours. I not only will make office hours as you need, but on the Mondays I put four to five o'clock at City Hall uh, aside so that you can find me. And now, this is not a commercial, but on Saturdays from 11 to 12, I'm at Pete's Coffee at Oak Grove and Treat, and I buy the coffee. You can buy your own donuts. <laughs> all right, I want to, lastly, we have uh, to thank all the rest of the employees who are out there right now, making sure that our city is taken care of. Whether it be Whether it be John, who I know is in love with trees and is our best tree guy, or Jane, or Daisy, or Wendy, all these people are out there every day for you. 
all right? They may think they report to us, but no. They are reporting to us all. They are the heart of the city. And please, when you see a city employee, say thank you, or say at least good morning. And hey, isn't it great that we're here? And a lot of percentage of our city employees actually work uh, and live in Concord. With that, uh, last few words. Of all the things that I've talked about tonight, or this afternoon, you get 10. I was planning to have a lot more. Breakfast will be served. Uh, we have facing a very severe crisis right now throughout the country. That is the most important. The name of our city is Concord, all right? I hope we weren't named after a grape. And I know it wasn't because of Concord, Massachusetts. I like to think it's because when Pacheco was destroyed, the town of Pacheco, and they came here, the people in the first six months said, we're gonna live in Concord. We're gonna be living in concordance with one another. We cannot, as a society or as a city, continue with the concept of division. I would remind you that when we started, we ended with seven words, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. No matter what our differences may be on our economic system, our political system, and our past social ills or greatness, we need to be together. We need to listen in a civil manner. We need to engage with one another. We need to be open to changing whatever views we have based on new ideas, new experiences, and the experiences of others. We need to listen to each other. So remember, we're in Concord. We pronounce it a little odd, but nevertheless, we are living in concordance with one another. Please remember that. And finally, if anyone should ask you what the state of California uh, has, it has the city of Concord, and that's the most important part of the state. Thank you.